touch on the overall numbers quickly before we turn over to Teddy for the reports. The numbers for the North End are, are excellent. Um, just going through the overall numbers, there's no homicides. There was one sexual assault, but that's a report of a sexual assault. The, uh, the parties were uh, drinking and it, it, it's not a bona fide incident after, after investigation. We, we took it as a sexual assault report because we always do that, but in part of further investigation it wasn't found to be. That was not a bona fide incident, but it was on the report. Uh, and the one robbery, we had two arrests on that on Richmond Street, great work by the A1 officers uh, who, who went down there and made that arrest. There were no aggravated assaults, there was one break and entering, one auto theft, uh, that was an attempt and there was also an arrest on that. Uh, there were four last week from uh, general last week. One, only one last week from the medical It's amazing we're down to one now in terms of statistics. No graffiti reported on this chart gave me, no community reporters. 11 uh, total motor vehicles by the police. We issued 91 move violations and 320 uh, parking citations. And it's not only arrest, we did have two arrests for the robbery. We had one arrest for the attempted auto theft. And the uh, anti crime unit made a warrant arrest. Uh, also, the, the office has been doing a good job down in, in the North End in terms of overall crime and we'll see it in, in, in the statistics. The, uh, the captain said the sexual offense was parties known to each other and uh, it was cleared by a non bona fide incident. The robbery was um, uh -uh, 96 Richmond Street on the 29th of, of uh, May. It was a um, victim, the, um, actually, the suspect, he stole the victim's iPhone. He, they stated they had a gun. None was recovered. The phone was recovered, and the uh, individuals involved were arrested. It was 96 Richmond. That's in between um, North and Hanover. It's right by the old school building. They thought those were the low numbers. Well, that's not. Well, I know, but across the street is the job pad. One away. The thing in is 96. Yeah, that's where the job pad is. I think they actually grabbed them on Hanover. Yeah, we got them on the right side. I think they went on Hanover. Yeah, they got them by the. Connor store. That's where the Connor store was where the arrest was. Oh, were they local kids? No, they were from Dorchester. Uh, Dorchester. Madison, Dorchester. Madison, Dorchester. Uh, they were not local kids. Yes. We've seen these iPhone thefts. The most common thing stolen no, 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 was was on was an iPhone. Oh, an iPhone. They steal yeah, these phones. Was oh. These phones are expensive. They're worth two hundred dollars on resale. You don't have two hundred dollars usually on your person if they just walk on These things are expensive. Yeah. Walking is the other. Walking. They're going to try to do something that they saw them. Like they want the companies to make something that they're not going to be right. Right. They've been working on that for a while, trying to so that they can't resell these phones. That they have an electronic serial number and that they can't resell the phone. Yeah. And they've been doing so. That's something that law enforcement is pushing. So they don't do that. Uh, we have it here. Any all the major cities are having the same problem, unfortunately, with these uh, cell phone thefts. If you have more so it's, it is an issue. Those are the main things that are going on. Because it's the Apple. I mean, that's the key one thing. Uh, the iPhone that they seem to be taking. Do they tend to go after people who actually have the phone? Out? Yes. Yeah. Yes. As they, opposed to anything. They see the phone out, and and, and this one was unusual because it was. 4.20 in the afternoon, very unusual that it's usually later at night. But I tell people, because a lot of them are around areas where, say like the Boston Common or the downtown crossing later, later at night. So would you walk around with $200 in your hand while you're around? That's what you're doing with your phone. When you're using it, like people do, and they're texting, and you just, we all, especially young people, I just always have that phone in there, doing everything with it. Um, but just be aware of your surroundings because if they are our, our most common item stolen is the iPhone. The um, 
B &E, it was at 120 Fulton on May 28th. Uh, basically, it was an attempt, you know, the door, front door was damaged to the apartment. And they didn't get in, no, no, they didn't get in the entrance. There was damage around the lock and the uh, frame of the door. The larcenies, uh, there was four larcenies. Um, on the 15th, Stillman Street, lost the of uh, motor vehicle plates. On the 17th of May, on the uh, two battery wharf, last year of a bicycle. On the 9th of May, uh, Lewis Street, it was the uh, uh, last thing in the building, the victims again found his um, basement door open and his bicycle was taken in a cordless truck. And the fourth one was on the 29th of May on Snow Silver Street. Again, uh, motor vehicle plate stolen. The uh, one last for motor vehicle was on the 23rd of May on Fulton Street. And the um, what was taken was the, the victim had just filled um, prescri prescription meds. And the person broke into the uh, car and uh, worked several days to fill with uh, his personal medications. She goes away. 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 She that's just another example. I don't want to go away anymore. So, so, the, so all those yeah, medications medication was left was at 1122 at night. Yeah, visible on the front seat. Just like the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And it was a, a, again, the car of choice, Jeep Cherokee, that he, he was trying to steal. And he was arrested by the officers. And, uh, did he even trust them? No, Watertown. No, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Nicole, what uh, 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 Yeah, actually, Nicole Canada, wanted me to ask that. <laughs> yeah, I did too. Uh, by knowing him, he was originally from. He's originally Charles Tapp. Oh, that's it. Oh, that's it. That's it for the report. You know what? I, uh, it was on the news today. I, I figured I'd mention it because it's causing a, a bit of an uproar because uh, we close uh, school tomorrow. There were 15 letters, uh, white powder. They weren't white powder letters, but they threatened a, uh, weapons of mass destruction incidents in, in the Boston area. Just, uh, these letters came from Texas. It's happened in other places around the country. Now they picked Boston to send them. They postmarked from Texas. They're threatening letters. We received, uh, well, a child's not high. We received one. I think the first one. And then we found out total, I think, 15 letters. There are no, uh, there's no uh, material in them. There's no rice in or any anthrax. People are getting nervous because they have to send these kids to school tomorrow. So we got a lot of inquiries, but nothing was found inside the letters. But they, they are correct. Have you not been school to get letters? No, not, not, no. I was just checking with them before I left. We do have the uh, Joint Terrorism Task Force working and the FBI working with Boston Police uh, on the so high, high school. 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 High school, maybe both. Yeah. Both. Uh, but yeah, the O'Brien School, Charleston High. I'm sure the press will have it all in the paper tomorrow, yeah. all the lo locations. Yeah, the Elliot did not get one as of, uh, well, not reported yet when I left the police station 15 minutes ago, but there were a lot of them, some, unfortunately, some targeting our, our schools. And again, uh, well, you know, we were in the news from, from a terrorist attack, and now some not, probably in the, the Senate newsletters, how uh, it mentions Al Qaeda and all kinds yeah. of stuff. And, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, I saw one, you know, a photocopy of one of them. It's just, you know, and I can't come in one of them. In the meantime, you school. Yeah. Yeah, and, and again, if you frighten children, you frighten school administrators, they think there might be some poison in them, they're opening these. Just, 
Yeah. yeah. But we, we do want to put the message out that nothing was found in any of the uh, letters. Obviously, we analyzed them. Yeah. Well, I hope you lose your proof. Oh, I believe it did come out of the news now? Okay, that was the message we were trying to put out. Yeah, so they did say a couple of Yeah, yeah. I mean, they did put it on the news that there's nothing in the letters. Which, which is good. And that's the message we wanted to get out. Uh, obviously, it was not the president. It is safe. Uh, if anyone has you know, kids or grandkids, there's no threat. I mean, it was a vicious threat in the letter. There was no powder. Right, there's no powder. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 yeah it's still scary when someone does this or takes advantage of a tower in a city that had a terrorist attack to send these letters out. Uh, it, it, it's unfortunate that someone would do that. Uh, they, they were kept close to Texas, and the other day I followed up on it. So, um, oh, yeah, there was an incident uh, I was asked to mention on. Uh, June, uh, June 3rd, 10.53 p.m., 2.14 Hanover Street, we had a 20-year-old fall from the roof. She's going from across from a roof. She's attempting to climb into an apartment window, go from one building to the other. She's a Suffolk University student, uh, and I believe there were the, the people in the apartment were students also. Luckily, the young lady is going to survive. Uh, she was going from one apartment to another? I heard it was on the roof. Was it on the roof? She was on the roof, but she's trying to get from it to another apartment. Yeah. Uh, you know. It's a big building. I don't know how many stories. CBS. It's a big building. It's a big building. How many stories? Six, five, six stories. Yeah, it's a CBS building. She fell a good distance. CBS is Broken back, um, spinal injuries, uh, seriously, seriously injured. What broke her fall? She is going to survive. I, I'm not sure what, what, what broke her fall. Uh, oh, she has a part of the fall with spice. She has a part of the The good news is she's, she's going to survive, but obviously a serious, uh, yeah. serious yeah. incident. Uh, it did involve um, Suffolk University. So was it determined that there wasn't alcohol involved and there wasn't a fight because those are the two things I heard? You know, you know what, I haven't... A previous fight. Yeah, they, they've been a call, but not that, not that, that, that evening. Yeah, not that evening. Um, that, the, the, the way they briefed me was go, going to the apartment from one apartment. Yeah, and it wasn't the, yeah, there wasn't a fight, you're not running from anyone, anything like that, but so not to be accurate. So well, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's an absentee landline, isn't it? It's so nice, though. And we have that, Tommy, did you leave? How many calls for that? Yeah. 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 No, have you, uh, has anything else come out about the man on Beacon and Hill who was like mid afternoon that uh, broke the girl? That's a good question. The, um, we had, as you say, pretty much everyone, within two days, there was actually four. We had another woman come back. There was three originally reported. Another woman, uh, she, when she saw it on the news, she said, I better report this, that she was also uh, a, a, a guy groping woman. Uh, three of those took place within one hour's time. Okay. Just to show you how, how close these were. Uh, and, and the streets are, are like right tight from one street to another. We did put out the first video, which was kind of a far away, not as good. One of the residents had a better video. We put out that second video, which you can see more of the person. A lot of people are calling in, saying it might be this person, it might be that person. We are following down those leads. Uh, there's been no more attacks. We've had plainclothes offices up in the area, including plainclothes female offices up in the area. We've had uniformed offices up in the area. So we've had a lot of offices put up in the area. Obviously, we'd like to catch this person uh, and, and prevent them from doing any more. Uh, no, we can't mention that. <laughs> oh, was the guy from Fulton? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, there, there was a person brought in 
uh, for question. <laughs> yeah, just, I would mention that, but I just said to mention it. I'll do it. <laughs> it was the person we brought in for, for questioning. That person has not been charged, and, uh, and presumably <coughs> until you watch that film. <laughs> I have an hour by hour. I was on Fulton Street. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and, and again, if you look at that, that video, it looks like somebody, as the people who the victim said, it looks like someone from the neighborhood. It's a young person. There's a lot of young people up, uh, up on the lower end of Lincoln Hill. So what, what's concerning to me is we put it with the North End. We got it. Yeah. We got North End. Same thing with these type of... Uh, you know, I don't think groping or, or grabbing and incidents down the street. street. You know? and, yeah. So we've got it here uh, in, in the past. We don't believe it's the same person based on the descriptions uh, that we have. The descriptions are a little bit different than the descriptions that we have in the North End. Obviously, though, you know, keeping our eyes open down here too. If anyone sees anything, please let us know. We did get a lot of information from a lot of people calling and thinking, Hey, I, I think I have some seen that guy in the area, so that, that's always helpful. Well, and people looking at their videos. We talk about videos all the time. Those are from residents. They have videos that go outside. So that's excellent. If you've got video and you know something happened in the street, look at it, call the police, we'll go up and look at it with you. That's how those were found by our detectives. Get it going. Anyone review the video? The video you can see it on YouTube. Yeah. Do the Boston police have their own YouTube? Uh, uh, yeah, about VPD News, VPD he's won that, but yeah. we, yeah. and Facebook, we and you can get it off a, you know, wrong board, so huh? really <laughs> we're, 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 we're in the 21st century. Yeah. 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 Um, so, yeah, but that's good, good to bring that up, though, because that's really causing a lot of, uh, a lot of concern. A lot of, you know, with a lot of young, a lot of young professional women, and that's exactly who this person was taught, young professional women, to the victims, uh, nurses going home. I mean, you don't expect it to, to you know, so I'll just warm up like that one. The uh, law party update? That would be me. So the only piece I can add to it again is, uh, you know, women have to be aware they have to pay attention. And like the past events over the years, uh, the bad guy runs up from behind, grabs and grabs and grabs, woman screams, somewhat of a struggle, bad guy takes off. Obviously, from behind, the victim can't see, the bad guy keeps going, and then the only thing the victim can see is the back of the person. If the hoodie's up, then all you get really is the hoodie. So again, you know, for anybody who's watching this, you know, really pay attention to your surroundings. Whether it's in the morning, afternoon, or night, going into your house that there's nobody behind you, or coming down the street that does not look familiar to you, you see something like that, then obviously go towards a group of people, walk into a store, get to a safe place. If something does come upon you, don't feel comfortable, yell fire even yell right but it's always going to draw our attention to people and that's what the bad guy doesn't want to see hopefully he's going to take off right away and most importantly if you can get any description even if you are paying attention we should get that first view of that person coming down the street that's what we need um, on the loud parties so roughly for the last 30 days we always meet on the first Thursday of the month and in the last 30 days we've had 14 calls there were no repeat calls to any of the locations I guess good news for some of the residents that live in the vicinity of North Marge and Endicott and Prince, we had one call for the last 30 days, and that was at 90 Prince. Everything else is sort of scattered around the North End. Um, we did not generate any, uh, like, a loud party report for the database. We are keeping the sheet on the 911 calls. Again, 14 calls, not too bad. Uh, my orientation start Friday for Suffolk, so it'll be uh, 9 to 11 for seven days. I'll get uh, four groups of 60 on uh, Fridays and Tuesdays for the next, well, I don't know how that comes up for the next three or four weeks. And uh, Emerson College, I'll be meeting with them on Fridays. It's more of a parent-student orientation where the parents are actually there. The Suffolk ones, I get groups of 60, but there's no parents. They have a separate day. Um, on elderly stuff, we were actually busy the last month. I'll give you a quick example. We had a woman on Fleet Street, uh, a couple of repeat, right? Let's see. a couple of um, items that were uh, reported stolen, and with help of family members, people who lived in the building, we did um, find those items. I'm not saying that the police reports weren't valid, but sometimes you find missed items, and you know you might file a report. Maybe that's not really what happened. So. Uh, that one particular person ended up falling. Uh, we ended up making a couple of visits down the hospital. We met a couple of family members and uh, 
uh, sort of a good story. The mother will re be relocated. Two of the daughters live up in New Hampshire. One lives up in Bilrica. The son lives overseas, so they're going to have the mother live closer to home. The North End was, was sort of a difficult spot for them to get to, so that's positive. And Bobby Luongo, who's our senior response officer, working with two other elderly. In the neighborhood, it seems this month we've been somewhat busy on that end for um, uh, just some elderly who are in need. And hopefully we, we do the best we can. We try and go up the extra yard to make sure that they connect with family members, um, health professionals, and if there might be a point in time where might you need might need an evaluation, we try and go to that end and then do follow-ups on this. Place. I think there were good stories. Captain, did you want to mention Christopher Long's talk? Yeah, we did one, one question. Oh, sorry about that. Another question, but uh, Sunday morning I woke up. Uh, I think it was Sunday morning. Yeah. And uh, there were several residents talking about a uh, episode that happened that night on the corner of Charter and Henry. Yeah. Uh, That's Sunday morning. Yeah. 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 So I was told. Is that I didn't hear it. Is that the, that's the arrest for 17 henchmen? The guy breaking into the cab? No, no, no. That was just this last Saturday or Sunday morning around 2:45. Okay, was yeah, this was this was not 2:45. So. Yeah, and there was a guy who was breaking into the cab. Yeah, he 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 was breaking into the cab. Yeah, they never got out of the car yeah. and never time, issued any kind of... The first time they came, the guys were downstairs, they didn't get out of the car, the guys were just like, you know, we're not quiet. And so they drove off. So then, um, and then they were like, oh, we can't find them. Well, we can't find them. 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 We not only that, but somebody came out onto the street to try to talk to the cops to say, hey, you need, you know, you need to fix this. Mm -hmm. And the cops were like, that's okay, we got it, we got it. So they shut off like the one witness, kind of like, we got it. But they still didn't get out of the car. And, you know, if you know that, if you know that these, if you know who it is, I mean, the first thing is, is just kind of like, let them know that they got it off the street on the first time. If they live somewhere, then say, where do you live? If they have to be called back again and they're still out there, then they need, they need, they need something to be done. Okay, so what's the date on that again? It's just, uh, just Saturday, Saturday night, Saturday morning. morning. Saturday night would have been, so it would have been Saturday the 1st or, or Sunday morning? Sunday morning. 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 Sunday from what I understand, some of that party lived in the old uh, hairdresser. Um, Phillips. Phillips. Yeah. Because they Phillips. told from it. Now I'm only hearing it from the people that yeah. actually witnessed it. That they told them to get back in the house. Go back in, yeah. So whatever that address is, wherever the hair salon is, it would be. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's not them. It's next door. Oh, it's in that door. It's in that door. So yeah, I guess it's an apartment now. But I guess there were a certain people on the corner of the pension in the shop. Yeah. 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 We'll have to run the address because, I mean, I'll, I'll even show you these at the end of the meeting. These are all the calls on the second, but there's no call for Henchman Street. I think the hardest part about that is that you're getting three calls. Got it? Yeah, it's on there. Ready for each other? That was where the call was. Oh, yeah, okay, 2.38 in the morning. Oh, okay, we'll have to call that up. I think the hardest part about that is, you know, not only nobody getting out of the car, but the first time driving in the way, it's not even safe on the The, 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 the neighbors to 
do what's being asked when, when they actually see an incident like that. It kind of just destroyed all that hope of getting people to dial the 911. You know, and that was kind of a little bit. Have you had that happen before in something like that? I mean, we don't, don't, go, to, we don't go to these monthly meetings and hear that, but I know myself, the captain, and Teddy, we're going to find out who the officers were. We will do an investigation, get reports. Of, find out exactly what happened. I mean, I'd like to think that that does not happen. Yeah, it was just, no. because I watched the whole thing. And so for me, it was just kind of a little disappointing and a little disheartening Same thing, yeah. I would really want to, yeah. you know, yeah. kind of get everybody over and call. Yeah. But they're not, they're not, they're not interested. Well, they, they, they just ride by. Yeah. They just ride by. Give them a summons for disorderly conduct or something, just so they can identify them. And while them to the neighborhood and say, look, I think yeah, or getting out of the car. You've got the uniforms, you've got you've got you've got the deterrence outfit. I can't get home, I can't walk out. Nobody on the street wants to come out because that fight was so loud. And if the cops leave the first time and they come back out and somebody would have gotten shot, that would not have just been that escalated event. But now we're gonna have a whole different situation. And that's going to be difficult Were they actually for fighting in the street? There was. That's what Paul says on the street, there fighting was, in the street. There was between the group of them down and the, and, and no, they wouldn't come out of their apartment. Right. But it was between the two and what was being said. One person actually in the neighborhood. So they're, they're yelling back and forth, which is. Huge. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I, I yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Like to the point of, you know, they all about going to kill you and the cussing into this and that. And, yeah. and it was out of control. So that's just for me. I'm no, no, yeah, I agree with you. They should have done something, but uh, I'm just a little torn now. What to do? No, well, I think the other thing is just I would say we meet every 30 days. If something comes up that is somewhat alarming on like that idea, then I, you know, I'd like that you could call the office, give me an email. Okay. Um, you know, and we we'll check it. I mean, I'm going to bring up actually I'll bring it up in a couple of minutes, but. Uh, well, I'll bring it up now. I mean, we had a call for a particular on Palmetto Street about a particular business about the late night window hours, but I did get a call on it. We, I did talk to Patricia Malone, did talk to uh, Detective Mulvey. Uh, we are going to do some follow up site checks on that location. So, I mean, if you do call us, you know, prior to the meeting, you know, just say three days after this meeting something happens. I mean, I prefer you to call me then. I'll get right back to you and we'll hopefully we'll have some better answers at the meeting, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think that's how I heard it. I just feel yeah. like I know you want so bad for people to call me yeah. once you can get more information and so that's been my motivation is to try to get the neighborhood back into the idea of calling because a lot of them are either nobody's going to come or they want to take it into their own hands and after that incident I was like oh, I want to take it on the own hands meeting you know but you know of course not really yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so I just, uh, yeah. well, what I understood though from the people talking that ground floor apartment that's on the corner of Charter and Henchman, and I think the door opens on the Henchman, there's always been a source of uh, concern. Well, we'll, we'll definitely do a, we'll do a site check on that and just yeah. while we continue, what, I just got to see how many calls we've actually gotten on Henchman from midnight to four to see if people have been calling. Yeah. I'm going to go back right to the beginning of. September, so we'll see if any calls did come in. Uh, the woman in the back? <laughs> yes. Henchman Are you really? and Shad have obviously been a problem. Really? Many years ago, they had a band literally playing on the rooftop of Henchman and oh, China. Yeah. Now, what does this tell me? I don't know about you people, but what it tells me is this particular area has been out of control for many, many years, a live being on a rooftop, no permit, nothing. How many years but ago yet, was that, Marie? Just to uh, let us know. I'd be lying to you if I had to give you an exact figure. Yeah, it could be 10 or 15 years, oh, regardless what it is. Oh, it's <coughs> 50, the bottom line is that particular area has been a problem, and I would have to venture to say it has to be an absentee landlord for this to continually be happen because I know it could never happen in my building in a million years where I live. It could never happen. So people only get away with what you allow them to get away with. And this has been going on. And the question I'm asking is who is allowing this that this has been going on for years? That's what I want to know. How do they get enough people call? I, I, last year, I saw there was a party on, on the corner of uh, Cooper and Salem, third floor, 
4.30. Windows open, louder than I can imagine, and, and I was the only one that called. Yeah, that's what happened. It was insane. The limo lived downstairs. She was afraid to call. Yeah, that's yeah. That's well, we, we, we can do a flyer drop in the, the city of Benjamin and child. You can put up a she nice flyer on the reason why you should call. Yeah, Most people yeah. think you call 911 when it's an emergency, and that's not the case. We take 74,000 radio calls. We take 74,000 radio calls on this district. 80% of them are service related calls. It's for pies, pies. Most of the calls we actually get are homeless on the 11 areas that we cover. But 74,000 radio calls, 80% are service related. It's not that 911 emergency where you know, like you see on TV, it's quality of life issues. Most of the issues that we have down here, quality of life issues, and those are the calls that we get. But we, we, will, we will go to that corner apartment, Charter and Hedgeman, yeah. and lock up the door, and we'll see what's going on here. Get out. At least pay them a visit and say hello with the police. First one, you said? From my understanding, it's that one that opens on okay. the country. Now, when you do follow up with the officers, if they do say, well, actually, we told these people that lived in this apartment to go back in, would you knock on their door as well say, look, you know, you're on notice now, this behavior is not acceptable. I mean, they see from you, it'll be different than somebody in the neighborhood. We give out a warning letter, that's the first okay. thing we do. We notify the building owner, and then we pursue it from there. We like to think the first time out that it'll cease and desist, not that it might come up and pop up a couple of months later, especially if, they're, if they call the GH kids. Now, I'm going to be really brief on this, but for Henchman Street, and again, we cover all the radio calls from midnight to 4 o'clock. And going back to Hitchman and Charter, and I'm not saying the stats aren't the most accurate, but the last time we got a call on Henchman Street was back on March 3rd, Henchman and Charter for a lot of party, and then just prior to that, believe it or not, it goes all the way back to October 19th and October 20th, so we are not getting calls. We need people to call. If you don't call, we do not know about it. But, but my point so is that we have, these, these, are, these are all the 9 calls that we've had from midnight to 4 and up then since the beginning of September. And we've only had four calls. So it sounds like it's an awful lot, but we're not getting it. Right. Yes. I agree completely. I think that that's where I got stuck was just how much work I've been trying to do in the neighborhood. And then after enough people seeing that incident, I think we're back at square one again, at least in there. And since there are a lot a lot of college kids in that little yeah. So we have the apartment now so we can we can follow up. So